So as we were saying then, substituting the time t equals one second into this equation to find the final position, we get zero for the first two contributions. And the last contribution gives me one half times 20 times one squared, or uh, 10. 10 meters is the final position for phase one. So that then completes our determination of what happens in phase one. The motion then goes on into phase two on this side, where now the velocity has stopped increasing and is staying constant, right? The acceleration, which was 20, is now down to zero. And the position of the rabbit then starts to increase linearly like this. And we want to determine then when this rabbit is going to end up crossing the final finish line. So <clears throat> what we do know then is that during this time interval, the velocity has maxed out to its maximum value of 20. The uh, initial position of the rabbit, which is starting from here now, this is the final position for phase one, is now the initial position for phase two. So in phase one, the rabbit starts out at 10 meters. It's no longer accelerating. And the one thing that we know is that the final position of the rabbit when he hits the uh, finish line is going to be at 100 meters. The question then is how long is it going to take the, um, uh, the rabbit to make it to the finish line? Now we have to be a little bit careful to keep in mind that in fact it's already taken the hare one second to get to the beginning of phase one. So our final answer for the time t is going to be whatever length of time phase two takes plus the one second from phase one. Now let's look at what we have here. We have a zero acceleration case, so this is really a constant velocity case. But nonetheless, the kind of information that we have are the initial velocity and the initial position, and we're trying to solve for time. Oh, we also know the final position. So this sounds like a case where we are relating positions with times and that then is, let's see, that's the second of the three classic types of equations. So um, I'm going to want to use this equation here. I can substitute everything in then and uh, solve because I know the final position, the initial position, the initial velocity, and the acceleration I know happens to be zero in phase two. So we can just kind of ignore this last term and solve for that time t. So writing it all down, the final position is 100 meters. That should equal the initial position, <coughs> which was, initial position was 10 meters, plus the initial velocity, 20 meters per second, meters per second, times time, plus 1 half at squared, but a, in phase two is zero, so one half times zero times t squared. And that, of course, all just gives me zero. So I'm solving this equation here. And we can do this fairly well in our heads, I guess. We see that we would subtract 10 from both sides of this equation and learn that 90 meters equals 20 meters per second times time t. So t would equal 90 meters over 20 meters per second, which is 9 halves or 4.5 seconds. 4.5 seconds. So the total time taken by the rabbit then is the sum of these two is 5.5 seconds. So let's just uh, sum up all of that. So then we've just learned that for the hair total time <coughs> equals <coughs> one second. That was from phase one plus 4.5 seconds. That was from phase two. So the total time taken by the hair is 5.5 seconds. Now the tortoise 
you might recall, we had done that uh, a few steps ago. The time it was going to take the tortoise, here I have our calculation from before, was actually 20 seconds. So for the tortoise, the time, total time, is 20 seconds. So the hare wins. by actually quite quite a wide margin. Okay, so I think that gives you a good idea then of how to handle these um, constant acceleration problems. Now of course, uh, constant acceleration includes the case where the acceleration equals zero, so con which would mean constant velocity also. So those are just a special case, constant velocity problems. And as I had emphasized, ultimately, they all boil down to using one of these three equations in the appropriate ways. So it's good to know and memorize these equations and know what they relate. So what we can do is we can relate velocities to times in one of the classic equations. In the second classic equation, we relate positions with times. And in the final one, we're relating velocities to positions with no reference to time. And I hope also you can see that by basically laying out the algebra very carefully in terms of what you know, and then looking at the uh, various equations, you'll be able to pick out the equations that you need. Doing algebra with those equations that you guys are all quite good with, um, you should then be able to solve for whatever the unknowns are in the given problem. Okay, so that wraps up our constant uh, acceleration example, an example of objects moving in one dimension.